Hi, my name is Cody Craven, and we're going to try to go through and do some live coding, creating a multi-stage Docker file for Node.js to set up a local development environment, and also something that will build a, a decent production image. So, first thing that we want to do is open up our folder, and I'm going to create a Docker file. So we first need to decide what base image we're going to use. So I'm going to go over to Docker Hub and go to the official uh, node image. So there's all these different supported tags. Uh, I personally like Alpine images because they keep things small. And I'll go off the latest uh, long-term stable release, which would be 8.11.3. Alpine. And here's the Docker file, which will be important to us because we'll want to see what command actually gets, gets ran when this is live. So we're going to go from node 8.11.3 Alpine. And since we're doing a multi stage build file, I'm going to give this a name. And I'm going to call this dev. Now I'm also going to end up with another image. We're going to call this, or start with the same thing, Alpine as, and we don't really even need to give this a name, but it's nice to have it. So now we have a dev and a runtime. Since this one is the last one in the file, if we do a Docker build, we're going to end up with this as being our container. So if I were to go in and say run maker slash test and run maker slash prod test and save my Docker file and do a Docker build. And we're going to call this test. So it's going to run through, do our two stages. So there's stage one, stage two, and we go ahead and run this image, docker run, move to test, and we'll go ahead and drop into shell. If I do an ls, we will see that there is the prod test directory, but the test directory does not exist. So we know for sure we're we're getting the last step of our multi-stage build here. So now that we have a Docker file, we will probably need to set up a uh, an npm project. So we'll get out of our Docker container, run an npm in it. Except I don't have npm, so let's let's do this Docker all the way. So I'm going to take my test. Uh, container that I just built my image. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use it as a working directory. So I'm going to create a user source app. app. And I'll apply it to both images just for good measure because we'll ultimately end up with them there. And I'm going to change my worker to user source app. So when we do a Docker build, every single line of the Docker image ends up creating a step in the Docker build. The workdir command will actually create a directory for us if it doesn't exist, so we can get rid of this extra run command. All right, so now if we go and build this Docker image, and then we run it, we should see that we oops, kill that and to run it in shell. All right, so now you'll see that we're in the user source app directory because we defined our work there. So next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to run npm within Docker itself. So we'll do this by doing a bind mount. So we do a dash v 
we're going to pass the present working directory in, and we are going to set its destination to user source app, which matches up with our work dir. And now we should be able to run npm init, and it'll give us our interactive setup, except it doesn't. Oh, no, there it is. I'm sorry, I misread the command. Okay, so this is our multi-stage Node.js example. And I really don't. I don't care about any of this for our starting point. All right. So now what happened is our our npm init command finished. And because we had bind mounted our present working directory into the user source app directory, when the package.json file was created, we ended up getting it here. It, it brought it out of the container and into our host. All right, so next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and set up some dev dependencies. Now, I personally am just interested in showing how this process works. So let's go ahead and use uh, maybe something that'll watch for file changes like Nodemon. Now, I don't know if Nodemon does polling, and I'm not certain that, uh, so I'm just gonna grab this command. I'm not certain that this will actually pick up the file changes that we're making on our host, but it's worth a shot. So what we're going to do is go back to run our Docker command with the volume bind mount. And this time, instead of doing an npm init, we're going to do the npm install save dev node bond. And so what should happen is our package.json file will then get a dev dependencies uh, entry. So there's our node modules that just got created from the container. All right, and there's node mod that popped in as a dev dependency. Now, next thing we need to know how to do is how to actually use node mod, uh, because I can never remember anything. Yes, I go to do my work. So it tells me Nodemon is simple, yay. Uh, so it looks like in place of Node, I'm going to run Nodemon. And it looks like I can pass arguments, but right now I'm not really interested in arguments. So I will go ahead and if I create a server.js file, and let's go ahead and change our main here. So we have a server.js file, and let's see if I can just grab... All right, so I'm going to go to Node.js's documentation, because I know somewhere in here they have a sample web server. This is not the Node.js documentation that I was looking for. Here we go, getting started guide. So it requires the HTTP package or module, so it's a host name, a port, server, server listen, and we'll just dump this all in here. All right, so now we should be able to go into here, and instead of npm install, we're going to run nodemon, and we are going to run our server .js file. Okay, nodemon executable not found in path. Now the reason this is is because I installed nodemon uh, locally as a dev dependency in node modules, which means it's going to be in the .bin directory. So 
If instead I run npx, that will try to run things from this binary or dot bin directory within node modules. So let's give this a shot. There we go. So nodemon's working. Now let's see if we make a file change if it picks up our changes. And it does. Okay, good. This was going to be a really terrible demo if it didn't. All right, so there we've, did, we've got live reloading as we're doing our dev work. So that's awesome. Now we need to do a little bit of cleanup in our Docker file. So one thing that we're going to do is right now I'm going to uncomment the uh, the secondary runtime and I'm just going to focus on the first. And this is this is the dev environment. So the main thing that I want to do first is make sure that my environment variable for node is set to use uh, for node env is set to development. So this is what when we run npm install, we'll end up getting our dev packages instead of only the production packages. Or node modules, I should say. And so then we're going to run npm install. And we'll set up our work directory first. Okay, so when we do this, what should happen is our package.json will be used. And we even have a package lock file, so that'll be used as well. And it will install our dev dependencies, which are Nodemon. So let's go back to my Docker build. And I'm going to rerun this. All right, so we're getting there. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to copy the files from our local into the container or the container image. And so what this should do is it should copy everything that we have here into the user source app directory. So there we get, we're getting a, a real install, whereas before it pretty much told us nothing's there. So now it's, now it's going off the dependencies that we had in place. So now if I run my run command and just go into shell, I'm used to Linux, so unfortunately I don't remember the command to get to the end of the line here. Um, so here we're going to drop into shell. Oops, I deleted my image name. So test shell. And we have a node modules directory. We have our Docker file. Okay. So this is where we need to introduce Docker ignore. There's files from our local build environment that we do not want to be bringing into our packages. So, oops. I had my node module selected. You select that. Dot Docker ignore. Okay. Docker ignore works a lot like a git ignore. So, We'll throw in some stuff in here that we know we don't want. Uh, this is for VS Live Share. If we have to do VS Live Share later, uh, let's see. We don't want our Docker file. That would be unusual to have your Docker file in your Docker image. And another thing that we do not want to do if we're getting repeatable builds is we do not want to copy in our node modules. So now in our Docker file, when we do our copy command, so we're copying everything from our host into our local and user source app, it's going to ignore node modules, it's going to ignore our Docker file, and it's going to ignore Git, which right now I do not have Git in here, but you should be working with the Git repository. So now if we rerun our build command, maybe it's not picking it up. Oh, I'm in my container still. Build. There we go. Now this is going to take a little longer because now in the side of the container, the uh, node modules package is not present. And that ran too quickly. So I've got something weird going on in here. 
Could be I've got an error in my Docker ignore. Or something else, but we'll go back to that later. Hopefully I remember. All right. So what I do want to test is go back into my container, go into node modules, make sure I actually have stuff in there. Okay, I do. Okay, get out there. Didn't need to go all the way out. Okay, npx node mon server. Alright, everything seems to be working. Okay, so next we want to do the same thing, but a few changes. So our worker is the same. Our env we now want as production. And instead of copying from the host, we could actually copy from our, our prior build step, our dev build step. The one thing that could bite us with this, though, is that we would end up bringing over our, our node modules. So if you were doing something where you're building, oh, I don't know, um, something in Go, what you'd use is you'd use this dev step as your as your Go build, where you're compiling your program. And then your runtime, you would actually do a copy from the dev environment. And to see how that works, you can look at the Docker file reference. And here it is, docs, Docker file reference. All right, so now we're going to copy here. Ah, I know what I did wrong. So before, when we said, or when I said that I would go back to what I did wrong, uh, I actually had my volume mount when I ran this. So if I take out my fine mount and I drop back into shell, I have a suspicion that my node modules directory may not have what it's supposed to have. But it does. Okay, I must have been hitting a cache of some sort because the very first time we ran our node mon install, it took us 22 seconds. And the reason I suspected that there was a problem was because when I ran this within the container for the first time, it, uh, it or when I was doing my build step, it ended in about five seconds. So it certainly seemed to me like there was something wrong, but it seems to have worked just fine. So now what we're going to do is exit our container, and we are going to build again. But this time, what should happen is that we should only get production dependencies in our container itself. So we're going to do our build. That finished awfully quick, so that should have worked. So now we're going to go and check in the container, again, without our volume mount. And we see that there is no node modules directory, just like we wanted. All right, so now what we want to check is what happens when we run this without any arguments. Ideally for me, if I release a container, and I'm not passing any commands. I want it to run my actual application, which right now, it is not. So we're going to go over to the Docker file reference that we mentioned before. And there's two things that we want to look at. There's an entry point, And the entry point lets us define an executable that happens when you first enter a container. There's also a command. And the command has a similar thing. They, they kind of play off of each other. 
If there's no entry point defined, the command does everything. It's just like running a command in bash. However, if you do have an entry point defined, this is going to run before that command is run. And so you can you can have some problems. For example, it gives you an example right here. So they're going from Ubuntu, they're setting their entry point as top with a dash B, and then their default command is dash C. So if you were to come in here and you were to change dash C to, oh, I don't know, LS, you're, you're trying to run an LS command, you're going to get an error because it's going to string these together and you're going to get top dash B, ls which isn't what you intended so if you actually wanted to use an ls from an image like this as your default entry point you would actually have to clear out this entry point or set it to uh, a shell or something like that so that your ls command would work all right so since we came off of the node image so there's the 8113 alpine we should go through, look at this. So this is building off Alpine 3.6, and we're going to check for an entry point. Okay, so there's no entry point in this file. Now there could be one in the Alpine, but so there's a command node, and let's go check Alpine to see if that has something that's going to set an entry point on us, which it didn't look like it did, and I don't think it does. But uh, it's always best to verify. Okay, no, this is building from scratch. It adds uh, a tarred set of items to root and sets shell as the default command. So we're all good. There's no entry point to find. We should not get anything unexpected. So if we go back to our Docker file, we're now going to just adjust our command to execute the command that we want it to use. And we're going to use the preferred form. All right, so we're going to run node server.js. And I forgot my comma and my quotes. Now I'm going to need to rerun my Docker build, rerun my, and there it is, our server's running. So with this, we have a hot reloading dev environment when we run our dev tag, and we have our runtime. The, if you, or when you need to learn how to run your dev tag, uh, you need to go to the Docker run command. Oh, I'm sorry, docker build documentation. And it gives you a flag where you can define your target. There it is, dash dash target. So, I've got a whole bunch of Kubernetes containers and things running here. Uh, but essentially what I'd run is I'd run my docker build dash dash target. And I'm going to set my target as dev test build dot. Oop, what did I do wrong? Docker build options path. Oh, we need to use .t to give it the name. All right, there we go. So now you see it only ran through step five, which puts us right here. So we now have a dev image, and we also have our production image that we're running over here. So the dev image includes the dev dependencies. It gives us the uh, the node mod that does our hot module reloading, which was our dev dependency that we set up, and everything's good.
All right. Thanks. Bye.